What's going on guys? Welcome back to part two on the antenna tuner build. Um, I'm going to keep saying merch because I assume that's what it's called. So unless I've learned differently, that's what we'll call it. Um, what we're going to do today is get the cover off of this thing and just give it an overall look over and cleaning and then try and solve a couple small issues here. We've got kind of a, a grinding... Um, resistance on the capacitor on this side and I think I know what that is so we might start there uh, we're gonna straighten out this inductor arm here and then also take a look at our counter adjustment and maybe lubricate our inductor a little bit because it's turning pretty tight the capacitor over on the output really feels pretty good so I think okay I got the screws out should allow us to take the cover off and I think we'll set it gently on its back slide the cover forward just set that aside and here's what we've got on the inside kind of an upside down view for you um, very simple, but it is very clean. This is really great news. Okay, so uh, obviously we've got our input and output capacitors. These are just an air variable. Um, I say input and output, but they're also uh, transmitter and antenna for tuning. It's interesting, my handheld's going off. And then we've also in the center got our roller inductor. This is pretty unique to me uh, because we're actually moving the inductor rather than moving the roller. If you can see that, that's pretty cool. Um, I had a Vectronics, I've got a video on the channel on that Vectronics, and that actually moved. It was a really crappy setup altogether. You can watch the video, but that actually moved the roller inside of the inductor, and it was really poor. So we're going to lubricate this and clean it and straighten the arm and the capacitor. Let's go ahead and start with the capacitor because I think I know what's going on. So if we turn, here's our smooth one. Hopefully you can hear that. There's no noise, and it turns smoothly. However, if I turn on this side, I got it now. I had to modify my screwdriver here, and I'm making sure to support the shaft. I don't want to push hard against this, but... I am able to break it loose. There we go. And what we're going to do is just slide this out. Actually, while we've got it off, let's just take a look. Yeah, it's just continuously uh, adjustable on there. And you know what I should have done is made sure I got this in the exact same position. We can do that later during tuning, but I know I can get it real close. And it's kind of an arbitrary number, somewhat. You do want to be close. I'm going to pull that out slightly from where it was. And lock it in. And let's see if it still binds. I just gotta unthread the screw here. If possible. There we go. Oh, interesting. This nut has been notched out in order to grip the um, plastic portion of the wheel without spinning 
So that way you can just turn the screw without having to hold the nut. And what's surprising is you'd think that's kind of a homemade repair. I think since this is kind of a homemade tuner, that is actually factory. Correct me if I'm wrong, those of you who know down in the comments. So now what we're going to do is just take off this knurled uh, knob here. And you can see it's not bent at a 90 degree. It's kind of bent down. So I'm going to take this bracket over to the vise and gently straighten it up. We'll flatten it out where it's bent and then straighten that so that it's parallel and this will sit nice and square in there. Just going to take a small flat. Maybe better off with a wrench on this. There we go. Okay, let's head over to the vise. So we'll go ahead and lock this in. And simply give that a squeeze to kind of flatten it. This does appear to be an aluminum bracket, so it should bend up real easy. You just don't want to be too tough on it. Okay, we're good and flat there. Now you can just see that top portion, or I guess it's the bottom to you guys. The thinner portion is kind of U-shaped, and it's not parallel with the lower portion. So we're going to stick this smaller part in the vise as well. Give that a little squeeze. Yeah, that looks good. Hopefully you can see that. Let's give it a little shine here. All right, we gave that just a little shine. I'll be honest, I did squeeze this a little harder than I should have, and I kind of put some indentations in that. This is a pretty simple bracket. If we had to, we could remake one, but it's just cosmetic, so we'll take a look at that. I'll go ahead and get it locked in here. Main thing is we wanted to straighten things up, and I think we accomplished that. Getting this nut back on might be a little bit of a challenge. Let's try a magnet. There it goes. And finally, our knurled knob.
may need to kind of open up that hole again. Oh, there we go. It's my mistake for gripping that aluminum too hard. There we go. And of course we'll put a touch of grease or graphite or something on there to get that taken care of. Hopefully you can see how much straighter that sits in there. In hindsight I probably could have just bent that by hand, but I was not aware of that at the time. Okay next I'm going to grab some cleaner and um, some fader lube. I've got some deoxit fader lube and we'll apply that to a few of the components here and just make sure everything is uh, nice and clean and turns smoothly and I think at that point we'll look at the turns counter and see if we can get that solved. I've read a couple posts about that being solved with a spring and I'm not sure what that means exactly but hopefully by taking a look we can figure that out together.